This is Twit. Folks are more than uh, they have in the past, at least, turning to wearables as a way to track not just sort of fitness health and uh, sleep health and sleep hygiene, rather, and things like that, but also tracking symptoms of COVID-19. So this is an interesting story involving a wearable that is near and dear to Twit's heart, at least, the Aura Ring. And I'm excited to have CNET's Lexi Savides here to talk to us about Aura Ring and this new study. Hello, Lexi. Hi, Micah. How are you going? <laughs> uh, it's going well. How are you today? Yeah, good, good. Thank you. Um, yeah, just uh, with my plant babies behind me and uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, enjoying the sunshine from the safety of my house. <laughs> yes, yes. We all, I know, are trying to do that. So uh, let's let's dig right into things. Uh, first of, of all, what is the, the Aura Ring for folks out there who are listening who might not know? Um, what is it that makes this ring unique? And uh, what is what is its purpose in general? So this is the Aura Ring. It looks like uh, slightly thicker than a regular ring and you can wear it on any finger. It's got a range of different sensors in it. So LEDs, an accelerometer and a gyroscope, sort of regular stuff that you would expect on a wearable device that you would put on your wrist. However, this being a ring, it's able to be worn as you sleep. So it's primarily designed to sort of track your metrics as you sleep to give you information on the quality of your sleep and the amount of your sleep. It can also track heart rate. It can track heart rate variability, respiration rate. And what really does set it apart from many other wearables is the fact that it can also track body temperature. It has some temperature sensors in it. And throughout the night, it's taking many, many readings. It's uh, more than one a minute is what Aura tells me. And so essentially, these are averaged out. So it can give you a minute by minute rating of your body temperature throughout the night and uh, then sort of give you an idea of whether or not it's raised or lowered compared to a baseline. It's not actually giving you uh, like a Fahrenheit reading like you would if you were taking a reading from a regular thermometer, but it's giving you kind of an idea of your baseline and whether you are higher or lower in the morning. So the idea is you wear the Aura Ring while you sleep and then in the morning you sync it with the app and you get some information on sort of basically a sleep score. So companies like Fitbit as well do have something similar. It gives you kind of an idea of how well you slept. It gives you a look in terms of your REM, your deep sleep, light sleep, any awake time, restlessness and things like that. But the more interesting thing is the body temperature reading that I was just talking about, which is being used as part of this study with UCSF to see if they can detect early signs of COVID-19 using data from the Aura Ring, as well as your responses to a daily symptom survey. Ah, so can you talk more about, do we know what sort of uh, questions are asked in the survey that goes along with this reading? Yeah, absolutely. So I am actually one of the participants that is taking part in the survey. And so the study is open to 2000 healthcare workers from UCSF who are on the front line who may come into contact with the virus, as well as up to 150,000 Aura users around the world. That's their current user base. Aura told me that I think so far around 10,000 users have opted in. So if you do have one of these smart rings, you can be a part of the study. You just have to enroll from within the app. So essentially what happens is you open the Aura app in the morning, you kind of sync the ring, see your metrics, and then you're prompted to take study, this study. So you'll actually, it will have a little prompt saying, document your symptoms. It will take you to the page on the UCSF site. Obviously you've opted in and you'll be able to see if you can, you can track your symptoms. Like you can basically say at the top, it says, I have no symptoms. And then it starts listing a big laundry list of any sort of symptoms that they're interested in, such as cough, sore throat, a fever, um, runny or itchy eyes, uh, sneezing, things like that. Anything that might characterize a symptom you can document. Then it, mm -hmm. the next page also asks you if you took your temperature and it asks you to input the reading if you did, not using the smart ring, but with another temperature device. 
And then finally, the last question is, have you been in contact with anyone else who has exhibited symptoms? So that's something that you do every day. And the researchers are hoping that that data combined with what is taken from the ring may be able to be used to detect early signs by essentially having an algorithm that can take all these data points and then use them to analyze whether or not someone may have signs of COVID-19. This is all very early stage, stage research. So this is all just like a hypothesis. hypothesis. They um, just want to make that very, very clear that no wearable device currently is able to have like the, you know, the, the sta gold standard in terms of detecting COVID. That's not possible. This is all just research in progress. So it's just a really interesting way that current wearables um, are kind of being repurposed and seeing if it might be possible to help fight new viruses and new diseases using technology that we already have. So obviously this ring is being used in the way that you're talking about it, the kind of the way it was designed, more like a sleep sort of uh, monitoring tool. Put it on at night, wake up in the morning, you've got your data. Um, is there any benefit to using this ring outside of just when you're sleeping? Like, like does the battery life on this ring or the, the data that's generated, like is it possible to wear this 24-7 and does that even benefit the study at all or is just kind of locking it into the nighttime good enough as far as they can tell at this early stage anyways? The Aura ring itself is designed to be worn primarily as you sleep, but lots and lots of people do wear it throughout the day and you're encouraged to in order to keep a track on things like you know exercise it's like using an apple watch or a fitbit you know it benefits your overall metrics in terms of health tracking for fitness and heart rate and so on if you wear it during the day however for this study in particular they're only interested i believe in looking at the data that is gathered overnight because that's when it's talking about body temperature and that is one of the variables that the researchers believe might be an indicating factor of covid19 so yes you absolutely can wear this throughout the day and if you are an everyday user not enrolled in this study you probably would want to be wearing it throughout the day because it's going to be able to give you um, essentially more insight into what you're doing in terms of activity levels. I've actually been wearing it only at night because I'm only really interested in being a part of the study. But it's kind of interesting because when you wake up in the morning and it says, okay, it gives you your readiness score, it gives you your sleep metrics. And um, it, I feel kind of like a little shamed because you're... <laughs> Like, well, you should aim to get around an eight kilometer walk or like a five, six mile walk in today because you did nothing yesterday and <laughs> it's take it off in the morning, right? And then right. I put on a, another wearable during the day on my wrist because I'm using that primarily for activity tracking. Um, but I, I kind of don't really want to double dip wearing two at the same time. <laughs> I, I did, um, yeah, that maybe I should. No, I, I should know that I'm wearing another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you should be able to sync that data together. Um, one of the things that I'm curious about, and I, I don't know if it's something that you may or may not know yet, uh, if a person starts to uh, say, yes, I do experience these symptoms, these symptoms, these symptoms, is that uh, then going to lead them to some action items. I mean, there are other services, uh, and including an app that Apple launched recently. Um, most of the popular voice assistants and some online uh, sites that you can say, these are the symptoms that I have. And then it starts to tell you, okay, well, here's where you can go get tested. Here's what you need to do next, et cetera. Is this the type of service that's going to give folks action items? Or is this purely meant to collect data for this study? That's a really great question. And at the moment, if you enroll in the study, so the researchers are only interested in those particular data points, your responses to the survey. You can also say, looking at your data, if you have taken a test for COVID-19 and document that as well um, within the app. However, it's really the most useful part of this is if you're not enrolled in the study, if you are using another wearable is to really just like take a look at your data and just sort of, you will know whether or not, if you've been using it for a long time, whether or not something is a little bit off. Unrelated to this study is that a user in Finland who was wearing the Aura Ring did a similar thing. So he kind of knew that his baseline readings were, um, you know, a certain number. And mm. he used the Aura Ring overnight, woke up one morning and then discovered that he had a fever overnight, but he didn't really 
feel it at all because it happened overnight. And he didn't really exhibit any other symptoms. Now, just this one reading, because he realized it was abnormal, prompted him to go get a test for COVID-19. He also did know, however, that he had traveled back from a COVID-19 hotspot in Austria. So he did have it in the back of his mind that maybe something might be off. The data encouraged him to go get a test. Mm. But this is really just extra information that you can use to be more informed. It's not... This is, I just want to make it clear that this is not a substitute for a COVID-19 test. This is not a substitute for um, an actual um, medical consultation. So you just can use it just as just to be a little bit more informed about your particular situation and then use that as an action point to seek treatment or seek a test if you need to.